Okay, so for titrations, this is an experimental technique that is used commonly in quantitative analysis, meaning we're trying to determine the concentration of a solution present in a sample. For example, if there's a derailment of a train carrying um, concentrated acid and that container has been damaged and is leaking into the surrounding ecosystem, there may be some concern that a nearby water source has been contaminated. And so the environmental um, group may, or the ministry may sample that water and test it using a titration to determine the concentration of acid in that nearby stream at various levels so that they can plan to manage the um, safety of that aquatic ecosystem. Perhaps the toothpaste um, that you used to brush your teeth this morning. I think if you check the label, it might say 0.243% of sodium fluoride. Analytical chemists need to be able to test and confirm that that toothpaste actually contains the percent of sodium fluoride that they are, that they are publishing or declaring on the label. And so analytical chemists can perform titrations to confirm the percent of sodium fluoride present in toothpaste. And there are multiple other uses, but this titration method is a very common and useful experimental technique. So we're going to use it in the context of acid-base chemistry. There's some key glassware to use. You'll be familiar already with the pipette, and we will use that to transfer precise volumes of the sample um, to the Erlenmeyer flask. The Erlenmeyer flask will be prepared with the sample, as we said, as well as the indicator. Now the sample is also referred to as the analyte, so you'll, have, you'll hear both terms. The key is whichever solution we do not know the concentration of, that's the one that goes in the flask. So we'll add the solution of unknown concentration plus a couple of drops of indicator. Into the burette goes the solution that we do know the concentration of, a standard solution, one where we know the concentration quite precisely. We call this solution the titrant. So although we'll be using the titrations for acid-base reactions, it doesn't always mean base in the burette and acid down here, or base in the flask and acid in the burette. Whichever solution you do not know the concentration of, that's the one that goes in the flask. The other solution, the one you do know the concentration of, goes in the burette, and that will be the titrant. Okay, the general procedure for a titration is as follows. You'll be working in a group, but I would put one person rinsing the burette. It needs to be rinsed twice with water and once with the titrant, and then rinse, and someone else working on rinsing the pipette, again, twice with water and once with the sample. Be careful not to draw any liquid up into the pipette pump. Uh, the burette can be filled with titrant after it's been rinsed. Make sure to remove the funnel off the top if you're using that to fill the burette and then record the initial burette reading. You'll prepare the flask, then the Erlenmeyer flask with the sample, you transferring the volume specified in the procedure with the pipette, and add a couple drops of indicator. You'll complete the titration then to the end point, the point where the indicator changes color, uh, making sure that you swirl the flask and that you rinse drops off the tip of the burette with the wash bottle as you go. Record the final burette reading in your observation table. I've posted some videos for you to look at to watch someone um, perform this titration. Also, you can look at photographs and steps in your textbook. And I'll demonstrate in class. Okay, the observations table is set up with a title, Burette Readings for the Titration of Whichever Substance is Your Sample with the Concentration and Stated Identity then of the Titrant. We typically run three trials, although the first trial will be rough because we have no idea how much titrant is actually going to be required. So you need to know how to read the burette in order to complete the burette readings. And so when you're performing the titration, you're first going to fill the burette close to zero. Now you don't, it doesn't have to be right at zero, but as we go to make the reading here, we realize that the burette is the bottom of the meniscus is lower than zero, but higher than one. Sorry, on my, on my scale here. So it's past zero, but it's not yet at one. 
So we're essentially reading down. And so I then look for the ones position, I know that's a zero. And then I look at the nearest tenths of a milliliter here. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and so on. And I can see that the bottom of the meniscus here is past the 0.1, but not yet at the 0.2. And so I record 0 0.1. And now I need to estimate the next digit because this one has not, does not have a, a marking for me. And so where do I think the bottom of this meniscus is? Well, the way that I've drawn it, it's not quite sitting at the 0.2. That's why I had 0.1 here. But I feel like it's almost there. And so perhaps I'll suggest 0.18 milliliters. Now, on our burettes, I think it's going to be difficult to tell whether this last digit is a 5 or a 6 or an 8 or a 2. So you'll probably just estimate a 0 or a 5 in the last position. Now looking at the next one, let's say that the volume, so let's say that that's our initial reading then of trial one. And now we'll say that the volume has uh, that been added to the, flask, to the flask from the burette, and we've reached the color change, the end point, and now we have a reading here. So let's say this is 14 milliliters and this is 15. So where would you read this volume now? The bottom of the meniscus. We're definitely past the 14, but not yet at the 15. And we're past the 0.6, right? But it doesn't even look halfway there. So maybe 14.63 milliliters. And so that would be our final reading. So the burette has started up here, and now it has dropped down here. And so this was the initial, and this was the final. And we're essentially looking for the difference, the volume between those. And so it's the final minus the initial reading that will equal the volume added. And so we go ahead and subtract 14.63 minus 0 0.18. And so it appears that 14.45 milliliters was used in the first titration. Now, we weren't very careful about that one. We just let the, the solution pour in until we saw the color change. And so we know that that's too much. We're just go we're not going to use that one for our data for our calculations. But at least now we have an idea that it's around 14 milliliters, not 44 or even just four. So uh, can that final reading from trial one be the initial reading for trial two? Well, it can if I think I have enough solution left to complete the next titration. And certainly I, I have enough in these 50 milliliter burettes for that to drop another 14 milliliters. And so let's say we continue that next titration, and now we get to the subsequent diagram here. So let's say we've dropped down, this is 26 here, and this is 27. So what would you read this final reading now of trial two? 26.91 milliliters. I'm gonna estimate that to be at the nine one mark, at the one. So this digit here was estimated. Okay, so there's my final burette reading. Now again, we subtract final minus initial minus initial to get the volume added. And so we come up with 12.28 milliliters, slightly less than when we had our, our first rough trial. Okay, and then trial three can be completed and you'll have some value here for the volume added. Since our first trial was rough, we'll ignore that, but these two volumes can be averaged so add it up and divide it by two in order to generate the volume of the titrant that was used. Okay, so you'll need to write a balanced equation in the analysis section in order to set up the stoichi stoichiometry for the calculation of the unknown concentration. So let's say it was hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide that were used and that formed sodium chloride solution and water. The, we'll imagine then that the acid was in the flask and that the base was in the burette, which means that we don't know the concentration of the acid. The volume that was pipetted into that sample, let's say our procedure called for 10 mil samples to be titrated. The concentration of the base was provided for us at 0.200 moles per liter. Now the volume 
this volume comes from the burette, right? So this was the average from the burette. So let's say our average ended up being 12.00 um, milliliters. Okay, so now we have a stoichiometry problem where we see the ratio of, of one to one here. And we have concentration and volume of the sodium hydroxide and are looking to determine the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, knowing the volume. So hopefully you're thinking to divide by a thousand for each of these milliliter values. Be sure to maintain the precision of the original measurements. And so we had four sig figs. We used the pipette to measure this so precisely. Maintain the precision. We used the burette to measure this. Maintain the precision. So four sig figs here. Okay, and now it's a familiar stoichiometric problem where we first find moles, in this case of the sodium hydroxide, concentration times base, and then we proceed with the mole ratio step. Okay, and so I did the calculation for the moles of sodium hydroxide, used the mole ratio of 1 to 1 to determine the moles of HCl, and then divided by the volume of the original pipetted sample in liters to determine the concentration. And so we've determined the concentration of the hydrochloric acid in the sample to be 0 0.240 moles per liter. So for your titration, you're responsible to know the procedure, the equipment, and the um, be able to construct and an observation table, record the appropriate burette readings correctly, and complete the analysis. So the analysis again will be the stoichiometric problem, begin with a balanced equation, list your concentration and volumes that you know, and identify the concentration you're looking for, and then proceed through a three-step stoichiometric solution. So go ahead and check out the videos and the simulations that I've posted online to um, further explore and understand the concept of titration.